Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. This door. <laughs> we started painting the exterior doors black and we realized how much we love it and we want to do all our doors. So we started painting the interior doors black as well, but we ran out of paint today. I wasn't expecting to do the interior doors, so I didn't buy enough paint. So yeah, I apologize about the weird looking door in the background. Hopefully in my next video, <laughs> it'll be all black. And I got a new bookshelf for my book of the month books, but I'm wondering if that shelf needs to go here and this shelf needs to go back there. I don't know. All right, anyway, let's uh, talk about some books. Like I said, it's it's uh, it's been a while. So bear with me. I read a total of 15 books in June. I listened to five of those 10 books on audio. Let's 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 do it. Okay, we're gonna start off with the After Oscar series. This is by Lucy Lennox and Molly Maddox. This is book two, LOL. I read IRL like a couple years ago, uh, about two years ago, and I reread it back in May. And I realized that I wanted to continue the series. But each book can definitely be a standalone book. It definitely has nothing really to do with the previous book at all. The characters may be in there, but they don't play a significant role. Oscar, um, you actually don't meet Oscar until book two, and I say you meet him. Uh, he's only like he talks to his exes, I guess, via uh, text or just talking on the phone. He's sort of in the background. Um, so, so these characters, some of these characters have dated Oscar, and uh, Oscar seems to be quite a character. And in book two, LOL, you get to, like I said, you get to meet him as well as like his family members. Now, I didn't really enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed the first book, the IRL book. Uh, this book, we actually meet Scotty. Um, he is our main character in LOL. We meet him in book one. He is carriage driver uh, in book one. So he plays a very, very, very minor role. You don't really get to know much about him in book one. So, but in book two, we're introduced to him, but you don't need to read book one in order to get to book two. He is our main character. He's working in New York as one of the carriage drivers to take tourists around town, show them all the hot spots of New York City. Uh, one night he's, you know, waiting for his next customer and someone just kind of jumps in his carriage and tells him to just go. Um, so he goes. And uh, so this, this, this guy ends up to be, his name is Roman, Roman Burke. He's an actor but he's dressed in like police get up. And so Scotty's thinking that this is like a police chase or something and him and his horse Nugget are like in on this. So uh, so that's how it starts off, no spoilers. Anyway, uh, that tends to lead to Scotty losing his job and he goes on to find Roman to basically tell him off for you know getting him into trouble like that so roman is trying to keep things on the down low he's got some things happening in his life he needs to kind of get away so uh he dated oscar but oscar has a place for him oscar's actually like some some sort of um business manager so he he may be roman's manager of some sort i'm not positive i don't i said it's it's been a while that was this was at the first part of june I read this book, maybe even the end of May that I started this. Oscar's very good at what he does. He has a lot of money and he has like a private mansion pretty much tucked away on like this farm. Long story short, Roman invites Scotty to come along because Scotty's kind of out on the street, doesn't have a job. He's got Nugget, his horse that needs food and a place to stay. Um, so they have like a, a barn there that Nugget can stay at while, while he's there. Um, I'm not, like I said, I don't remember how all that, you know, happened because uh, Roman and Scotty were not really, let's say, like on good terms. They didn't really know each other well. Like Scotty just knew that he's the guy that got him in trouble uh, for taking the carriage all around town when he wasn't actually a cop. So, so yeah, I guess kind of like a, not, not, they weren't really enemies, but they weren't really, you know, friends, but they sort of start to fall for each other kind of thing. Uh, it was just a fun story. Oscar is very funny and he, 
uh, he gets, he's, he's got all kinds of stuff going on in his life as far as like his family and his love life and things like that. It was, it was very enjoyable to read, but I wasn't as into it as I was the first one. It wasn't like, it was just kind of all over the place. And I felt like, uh, Scotty and Roman's relationship was maybe, um, too forced. Like it was all of a sudden they were attracted to each other kind of thing. I don't know. I wasn't, even though I, I liked the characters, I just wasn't as into them as I was in, for, in IRL. Um, so I did get this a four star, so like I said, it was enjoyable. I laughed. It was, it was a fun time. We move on to book three, BTW, which is for By The Way. Again, can totally be read on its own as a standalone. Um, I actually enjoyed this book more than uh, LOL. Uh, but I, I gave it four stars again because it still just wasn't as good as the first one. So in this book, we get James' story. We're actually introduced to James in the first book. We get a little bit more of him in the first book, but uh, we don't really get to know him. We get to we know that he's a lawyer. He has a boyfriend, a living boyfriend that kind of gives him hell. So in book three, we get his story. I did really like James, even though we don't get a lot of him in book one. I really did like his character in the first book. Uh, so I was kind of excited for this book and to see um, where his story went. Was he still with this guy that he was with in the first book? Um, you know, where where are the timetables at? So it is kind of years later um, from the first book. But James is, like I said, I think he's some sort of like property lawyer or something like that. So in this book, James's client, which happens to be his ex-boyfriend's father, is buying this motel and wants to make it into like an, a, a lavish hotel. It's in this very small town. Uh, so James goes out there and right at the beginning of the book, he uh, just stops off at this bar to just have a drink. And this is where he meets Sawyer. Sawyer is about 10 years um, younger than James is, but he's a very old soul. Uh, he is very hardworking. He ends up to be the grandson of whoever owned the motel um, before he passed away. So his grandfather passed away and left the motel to like his, his children. So it's it's just very run down, it's very old. It needs to be like pretty much re redone, like demolished and built from the ground up. Um, Sawyer has plans for it. He doesn't want it to be out of the family business. He has hopes of keeping it within the family and fixing it up himself and running it himself. So in comes James with his offer from his client to buy the place and they had met the night before. So things don't go so well when Sawyer realizes who James is. And he, they have, um, they have sort of a, sort of a hate, kind of a hate to love kind of thing going on in the beginning, but not that, but it's, it's only one sided. Uh, Sawyer, you know, is, he's attracted to James, but, but yet James is the one that's taking the family business away from them. So he has, you know, he has hatred feelings toward him, but yet he's attracted to him. And we do get to meet the guys from book one again in book three, but again, they play a minor role and it's nothing you need to know anything about. I, I, I really do think you can read these books as standalones, but I recommend le reading them as a series be just because you get to know the characters a little bit better and you get to know, you get to see where they stand. Like I said, like you meet James in the first book, but his, you don't get his story till the third book. And like I said, even though he was a small character in the first book, I really fell in love with his character and I was excited to get his, his story in the third book. So Sawyer and James' story was uh, really sweet. It was, um, it was fun. Uh, I, I actually, even though there's a big 10 year gap between them, I, I love them together. But yet, I still didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first book, but I still recommend the series. It was a fun read. I had a good time. Next up, I read Galaxies and Oceans by N.R. Walker. Uh, this was, this was also a four source for me. Um, I did listen to this on audio. I wasn't crazy about the narrator. Uh, which which sort of always takes away from the story for me, but the story was still there. In R. Walker's writing is just beautiful. All her characters just have such emotion, and um, she really she really knows how to bring her characters to life. So this is sort of a domestic 
abuse sort of story. So trigger warning there. Ethan was in a very uh, brutal relationship with his boyfriend who is, um, I believe some sort of some sort of political figure. I don't remember exactly uh, what type. He was very abusive to Ethan and he had Ethan up in a cabin in like his cabin in the woods. <laughs> Sounds really creepy, I know. But he had him there because he was battered and bruised up and he didn't want the public to see him. So whenever he would beat Ethan, he would put him away in this cabin until he healed up and then he'd bring him back out into the public. A uh, really shitty situation, but Ethan was determined to get out of that and to his benefit, unfortunately, there was like this forest fire happening. This is right in the beginning. He had to leave. He had to escape and he took this opportunity to get away from the relationship and from the life that he was currently leading. He left everything behind. It, it kind of reminded me of um, sleeping with enemies kind of story. So he emerged from that fire as someone else. He took on the name of his great grandfather, which is Aubrey. Yes, Aubrey Hobbs, uh, his grand grandfather. So he took on that name, but he didn't have a license. He had no insurance. He had nothing to his name. You read about how he gets to the point where he's at currently in the story but he ends up in this small town working for cash and working for a space to live and sleep and whatever and there this is where he meets patrick and patrick is the lighthouse keeper patrick sees something in aubrey that he really likes and uh, patrick is suffering from his lo his own loss as well he lost a partner a couple years ago and he's still never really moved on from that once aubrey or ethan comes back comes into his life he's starting to have these feelings again and so it's just a beautiful story they each have their own traumatic passes and it they they come together to heal each other basically it was it was beautiful story as always when in our walker uh wasn't my favorite that i've read of her but i i loved it still next up i read <laughs> the knockout queen by rufie thorpe um <laughs> I don't really know what to say about this book. I liked it, but yet it it sort of just made me feel empty. Like I felt nothing for 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 anything. Um like I just felt like I was I was waiting for more to happen with this book and it really didn't. Um so we have we have Michael who is we're we're getting the story from Michael. And it was almost like his biography that he was reading to us about his life and how he met Bunny, his best friend, just his ups and downs along along the way and where he is today uh with his life. And it it was I mean it was it was okay. It was it was me. It was just me. <laughs> so yeah, Michael is gay and he he likes older men. He's probably been into older men since he was about 13. Um, he started off like on Craigslist and then as the years progressed, he moved on to apps. He also meets, like I said, Bunny, his, um, who was actually his next door neighbor. Bunny was also sort of an odd character. Even though she was beautiful, she was not very popular. She was just, she was very awkward. So, so yeah, Michael tells us a story about how they met. Michael actually lives with his aunt and her son who is a terrible homophobe and I really like I I knew his aunt wanted to help him but yet she made me angry at times as you know to the way that she treated him but she but yet she still wanted to help him um, but she just wasn't doing things the right way so that kind of angered angered me in that part of the story um, but yeah like like I said it was just his life it was just Michael telling his life story and the people in it and um and where they are today the most important person in his story was bunny his best friend and um we get to hear you know where where she ends up and um yeah at the end of the book i was just like that's it <laughs> so yeah nothing really to tell for that one three stars this next book is another series, and I read the first one in June. This is Kalki by K.M. Uh, Newhold, 
and it, this is the Four Bears Construction series. You don't really have to read these books. You, they can be read as standalones um, because each book is about a different character. I read book two just recently and I, I'm loving it. Oh, well, I, I loved book two as well, but we'll talk, I guess we'll talk about that in my July wrap up. But I'm loving the series. I can't wait to get to the third book. But yeah, this first book, uh, it was, it was just, it was just so much fun to read. There was no drama. There was no anger. It was just a fun read. So this story is, is Ren and Cole's story. Like I said, each book is about each different ca character. Um, I recommend reading them all just because they're fun. Uh, I gave this one five stars. Uh, Ren is, has been in a, a very long relationship and in the beginning we kind of get him and his boyfriend breaking up in the beginning. So he basically decides he's going to go out and um, on a re like on, on a rebound fling, you know. So he goes out to this bar and this is where he meets Cole. Cole is part of the, the guys to Four Bears Construction. He goes to this club or this, this bar like every Thursday night and um, he runs, you know, this is where him and Ren meet, but Ren is pretty much trashed you know, drunk, uh, and Cole doesn't want to take advantage advantage of him, so he tells Ren to come back next Thursday. So yeah, Ren remembers, and he goes out next Thursday to to meet up with Cole. So it's just bas it was it's basically a hookup. Like I said they do hook up pretty quickly in the beginning of the book, but it was fun to read how their relationship grows. There was also a little a little thing on the side that they didn't know about each other uh, has to do with an app and they can text each other through the app. I won't tell you any too much about that but yeah there's no cheating or anything like that. It was just like I say it was just fun. It was sexy. Uh, no drama. It was it was just a fun read. I highly recommend it especially if you're looking for just something light and fun. There is a lot of sexy time um, so just throwing that out there you know, that's not your thing, or maybe that is your thing, you know, I don't know, but just letting you know, there is a lot of sexy times in there, but it's still, it's just fun. It's a fun story, a fun relationship. They're, they're both adorable. I fell in love with both characters, and I'm loving the, ser the series as well, the rest of the books. All right, next up is the Temptation series by Ella Frank. Uh, this is a series you definitely have to sort of read in order. Um, so the first book is Try. So this is Logan and Tate's story. It's an erotica book, so, or series, I guess. So there, once again, lots of sexy time. It's a little over the top, if you ask me. <laughs> I got sort of used to it as I read, been reading the series. I've read up to book three, but yeah, I've gotten used to it. I've also listened to it. If you are a Kindle Unlimited member, the, the book, the, the Kindle book also comes with the the listen, so you can listen to it for free as well. You don't have to use any of your Audible credits. It comes along with your with your Kindle Unlimited membership. So I took advantage of that and I did listen to the first three books. The narration was a little something you have to get used to. I gave the first book try a four just because I was trying to get used to all the sex and all the and and just the narration in general was just kind of throwing me off a little bit in the first book. I eventually fell in love with the characters very much. In fact, I gave book two and book three both five stars um, because as their relationship grows, it becomes much better. Uh, the story between the two men become much better, I guess. And there's still a lot of sex going on, uh, but it is an erotica book. It's very detailed. Um, so just once again, just throwing that out there. So it's, it's not, this series is probably not for everyone, but okay. So we have Logan Mitchell. He is all about himself. He is a lawyer. Him and his brother own, well, his, I think it's his half brother, but they own their own firm. And, um, the book starts right away with Logan on a plane in the, those little bitty bathrooms with a woman. So Logan is by, but yeah, the book starts off right, you know, just like that. And that's kind of, and that's kind of where it, it keeps going from the, from there. It doesn't stop. Logan goes out for what he wants. He sees something. If he wants it, he gets it. And, or he, or he does whatever it takes to get it. 
and one night he goes into the hotel or the i think there's a bar connected to the firm or something i'm not sure exactly how it works but he goes there on a regular basis and it's tate's first night there tate tate morgan is um our character that logan is out to get tate is straight he's going through a divorce so this is a very good straight to buy gay story so logan starts hitting on tate straight away and tate just kind of takes it as you know a grain of salt you know the guy's hitting on him it's cool whatever he's gonna be you know he's gonna be he's gonna be nice to him he's not gonna like you know be rude to him or anything like that he's a customer he gave him a good tip you know whatever he'll let him he'll let him flirt with him it's fine but logan gets persistent and tate sort of gets angry about it and logan starts to sort of tease him it was very interesting it was very interesting but um it just i wasn't I don't know what it was from the first book. I wasn't really connecting. Um, by the end of the story, I started to start connect with them and it kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger. So I definitely went on to the second book. So in book two, book two is called Take. And um, I really, I, I actually preferred book two over book one. Um, the emotions start to get a little higher between the two guys and um, are deeper. And that's kind of when I really fell in love with the story. We get to see in this, in book two, how they feel about each other. We get to meet Tate's family and um, how they how they go about treating Tate about what's going on in his life. I don't want to give too much away about book two and book three, especially if you didn't read um, book one, but yeah, their, their relationship grows throughout the first three books. And like I said, you get to meet Tate's family and how they feel about Tate and Logan. And once again, book two leaves you with a cliffhanger. So you have to move on to book three. Book three is trust. So I can't, <laughs> once again, I can't really give you too, too much information about book three because they all, it's, you have to read all of them. They all go together. It's nothing you can read standalone. Um, the relationship basically just grows into book three. Um, incidents happen in book three that definitely make Tate and Logan's relationship stronger, make them realize how much they mean to each other. Book three actually can come to an end. It, the series could actually probably come to an end, but it goes on. There's three more books after book three. I have not read those yet. I went ahead and I stopped while I was ahead, while there was like a stopping point because the first two books do leave you with, with some, some good cliffhangers. So, uh, yeah, again, I can't say, <laughs> I don't want to say too much if you haven't read the series, but just know that it's a, a straight to gay kind of story or straight to buy. Their relationship is one hell of a ride. And I gave the, the two, the, book two and book three, five stars, um, just because it was just a little bit deeper. And I really enjoyed Tate and Logan's character. And I really enjoyed where the story was going with their characters and all the little um, veer offs that we had with the characters and um, the emotions that that flew around. It was um, it was good. I really enjoyed it. I cried a little bit. Yeah, so I definitely want to continue with the series, but like I said, I stopped at book three. I, I started Trust at the very end of June, and I finished it in July. But yeah, still, I did listen to all three books, and um, the, the narrator definitely grew on me, uh, as well as, like, <laughs> all the sex that was happening. It gets, like, I think there's probably more in book one um, as Tate and Logan are trying to, um, or better yet, as Tate's trying to figure out everything, his sexuality, and his, he tends to be, I guess, insatiable, and I don't know, <laughs> it was just a lot, it was just a lot, and there's still a lot in book two and three, but there's more emotions and more relationships in book two and three. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about the series, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, um, spoil it for you. All right, moving on to What Lies Beneath by R.J. Scott. This is also a series. This is more of a mystery romance series. And I was very surprised 
to find out that I really did like it. I gave it four stars, but I really enjoyed having a mystery as well as a romance. So, um, and I do feel like you need to read these books in order as well. I haven't started book two yet. Um, book one sort of leaves you with a, qu a cliffhanger, but it's something that you can, you're not, you don't have to jump right into book, book two. I mean, you know, unless you really want to, but there, it does come to an end. Like part of the mystery in book one is solved, but there's still more to it. So I'll just leave it at that. So we have Chris Lassier. I'm not sure how to say his last name, but he is a horror writer and he is having somewhat of a writer's block. So his agent sends him to like this secluded cabin in um, Lancaster Falls. The, his agent actually fixed up the cabin for him to go out there. It's sort of like a spooky setting. Um, that's why his um, agent sent him out there so maybe he can, you know, get some get some ideas flowing. He has to finish a, he has to finish a series that he has written and has now become movies. So he has sort of that pressure on him, but he doesn't he wants it to be he wants to be faithful to his characters to his book he doesn't want it to feel like it's um being pushed um or or forced you know he wants he wants the feel of his book to to be real and uh he's just not getting that and so so anyway he moves into this cabin in Lancaster Falls and Sawyer who is a cop um, is getting suspicious phone calls about the guy up in, you know, up in the cabin. Who is he? Is he a drug addict? Uh, I think the cabin was known as to be like a, um, a place where drugs were sold and things like that. So he actually goes to the cabin just to see, you know, who's there, what they're there for, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so this is where him and Chris meet. And Chris right away, um, no, it's not like love at first sight kind of thing or insta-love or insta or anything like that, but he's right away attracted to Sawyer. Sawyer, on the other hand, uh, is attracted to Chris, but is, you know, trying to hold himself back. He has, he has some issues himself that he's working on. He's, um, he was a detective in Chicago and recently came back home to Lancaster Falls because of something that happened in Chicago. So he's trying to get his life back on track. As the mystery is happening and unfolding. We have Chris and Sawyer's relationship. It's, like I said, it's sort of one-sided. Chris is trying to persuade Sawyer, I guess, to go on a date with him, go out with him, come home with him. Um, he's being a little persistent, but yet on the other hand, Sawyer is kind of intrigued by him, but yet again, he's staying away. But this story, this this romance the love making is implied but there's not a lot of details about it so a very good um book or series to jump into if you're just getting into male male romances or like all the sexy times is not your thing i think this is um a very good story to start off with um because it has mystery it has love and romance and and other things drama happening in the background so there was never a dull moment in this story. I really enjoyed it. But like I said, it it does sort of leave you with a cliffhanger, but nothing that I felt like I had to jump into book two. Um, but I do want to read it. I because I do want to find out what what is you know what more could there be. But I know there is more because uh, that's kind of where it leads you. And um, someone comes back into town, and I believe that's you know that's where the next story is going to kick off with a new romance. So yeah, I really enjoyed it for stores. Next up, I listened to Conventionally Yours by Annabeth Albert. This was such a fun story. I gave it four stars. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the best thing ever, um, or, or it wasn't the best thing that Annabeth has ever put out, but it was really fun. Uh, these guys are gamers, but what I thought when I read the synopsis, I'm thinking, you know, like video games, but it's actually a card game. And I thought I was going to be bored with it a little bit, but Annabeth does a great job of really putting the details in to where it's not boring. It's very, you're, you're very interested in, in what's happening, but it's also sort of in the background. It's not a 
big part of the story, but it's but yet it is. But she she does a wonderful job at writing it all out and playing it all to where you know you get what's happening, you understand the game, you get it. So this is Alden and Conrad's story, I guess. I think this is going to be a series. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'll probably continue on with it. We'll see. Um, but anyway, they are gaming rivals, even though they are on pretty much like the same team. They kind of play against each other. Um, and they, they is sort of a hate to love kind of story. They not, don't necessarily hate each other, but they don't understand each other. Alden thinks Conrad is like this, you know, typical college dude partying all the time. Conrad sees Alden as like this nerdy, play by the rules, um, has it all kind of guy. You know, he has like the perfect life, you know, but really behind the scenes, they, they, they both have their own issues that other people don't see and they have to put up this front, um, to kind of keep themselves going. Um, so in the, anyway, they end up on this road trip to go to like this gaming convention and they they have to drive together and long story short they end it ends up to be just them two and other characters are introduced in this book as well so i'm guessing you know we're going to get their stories from here on out but they're very minor they're just kind of in the background uh so the story just concentrates on alden and conrad um so it's basically the road trip because once they get to the convention it goes really fast but their relationship pretty much starts on the road and they get to know each other and they get they realize that you know they were seeing the wrong person through each other's eyes i think this is yet another one of those books that if you're just getting into male male romances this would be a great start as well like i said the um the sexy times are there's not there's more relationship to the story than there are the sexy times they're they're there but they're um, they're, they're not as detailed <laughs> as, say, other male-male romances, but, um, this is just, um, a fun story about two guys that don't really know each other, and, uh, they discover who each other are on this road trip. It was, it was a fun read. Next up, Finding Finley by Riley Hart. Uh, this was, this was such a good story, y'all. This is a, um, Dom sub story. So, Finley is a troubled soul. He, I really enjoyed this book, y'all. This is five stars. He had it, he had it rough from the get-go. His mother was pretty much shunned from her family. She came from a very religious family. She became pregnant at a young age and they basically kicked her out because she wanted to have this baby. And her sister, she had a sister and her sister didn't know what happened to her. She thought she ran away um, on her own, but really it was her mother's doing. So there, there's that little backstory there of Finley. So Finley grew up, uh, jumping from foster home to foster home, um, after his, his mom ends up passing away when he's like 15, 13 or 15, some, something like that, maybe younger. So Finley sort of meets Aiden a couple times, uh, through his life, uh, as a young, as a young child and Aiden has shown nothing but kindness to him every time he's met up with him. Fast forward to current times, Finley is living with his best friend, pretty much hopping from job to job, trying to figure his way through life, basically. He's really into the Dom sub where he is wants to be the submissive and he tries to find these, these men online. Uh, Finley is, is still young, I believe he's in, I don't know if he's even 21 yet. He's he's still a virgin. He has not been able to submit to anyone that he trusts. So he's working one night and he ends up waiting on a table where Aiden is having dinner with his friend. And it just surprises Finley. He recognizes Aiden, but Aiden doesn't recognize Finley. Him, There is like a 19 year age gap between the two men but it works so well, y'all. Um, Aiden is a doctor and he's also a dom, um, but Aiden realizes that something's wrong with Finley when he meets, when they, you know, meet at the restaurant or, or when when they're encountered at the restaurant. Um, Aiden, 
Finley happens to be sick, so Aiden takes care of him, brings him to his house, and that's pretty much how their relationship is introduced, and and that's where their story begins. So they, you know, Aiden sort of makes an offer to Finley to come into his house and be like his house boy and to take care, take care of his home, clean his home, cook for him, do his laundry. He'll pay him, um, but he'll also, you know, let him submit to him or let Finley submit to him, but not in a sexual way and not in the beginning. It, there's, you know, there's no, nothing sexual about it in the beginning. Um, but, but that tends to grow with the relationship. I, I thought it was written out so well. Like I said, there's, there's a big age difference, but it, it was just done very well from, uh, just, just how the relationship blossomed. So it's, it's definitely a very, very slow burn, um, BDSM type of romance. Uh, so yes, yeah, so there is some, some role playing involved. There's um, like this sex party that they go to. Uh, it, it it does get detailed, but it's nothing that, I mean, I, I thought it was beautifully done. I thought it was beautifully written. It was very sexy and very sweet. I loved the story and I fell in love with these characters. Then I read The Life We Have by Kelsey Kingsley. I've never read anything by this author, so this first read for me. Um, I believe this is a series. I didn't realize it was a series until I sort of looked into the book um, because I felt like, I gave this one four stars, but I felt like there was something missing in the beginning of the book. So the, the story starts off really slow. Uh, well, for me it did. Um, it's, we, we get the story of, um, Grayson's mom and have pretty much how Grayson came to be. It kind of gives you like a little short story of how she became pregnant for Grayson um, like and basically who his father was. But then it jumps right into present time when Grayson's living with his dad and they have like this great relationship and but he's his dad is in a relationship with his aunt. So with his mother's sister. It was just I, I felt a little confused when when I got to that part because you get like this prologue of how you know how Grayson's mom ran into his dad and how she got pregnant for him. Oh, it was very kind of short lived, and um, and then all of a sudden Grayson has this great relationship with his dad, who's living with, who he's living with, and also has and his dad is in a relationship with his aunt, so his mom's sister. I was just like, wait. What is happening? But there is another book in the in the in the story, I guess, in the series. It doesn't say book one, book two. I think you can definitely read this as a standalone. That was the only part that I was just like, what was happening? I felt like we didn't get a backstory there. You know, it was too like we jumped in too much. You know, we jumped right into to eight Grayson having a great relationship with his dad that he never knew. You know. Um, but that's great. That's that's great. It was it was it was well done. I would I was just thrown off a little bit about it. Um, but Grayson, his dad is kind of like a rock legend. Uh, he was a drummer in in this band. But um, anyway, Grayson is also a drummer, and he is currently looking for a band to be in. He gets an opportunity, and um, he ends up having to meet his drum tech. Uh, his name is Zach. Zach is a, a bit older than Grayson. I'm not sure. There's a 10 year difference. I have to look at my notes. There is a 10 year difference between Grayson and Zach. But again, it's done very well. Grayson is also still in the closet. He hasn't told his dad uh, that he's gay. In fact, there's no like, that was another thing that I felt was missing. There was no, you know, and he's like in his 20s. He's still a virgin. He's never really met the right one, I guess. Um, or like I said, he's never really come out about it, but there's no story about that. All of a sudden he meets this guy, Zach, and um, you know, their their story takes off from there and uh, he's still trying to keep his sexuality kind of on the down low, but it's not necessary, it's kind of like in the background. It was, I don't know, I was a little thrown off. I loved the story. I loved the story of Grayson and Zach, don't get me wrong. I don't wanna give out bad vibes about this book. Like I said, I gave it four stars. I liked it a lot. And these two guys 
I really felt a connection with them right away. Um, it, their relationship does take a little bit time to grow, and so I liked that about the book. They get to they get to know each other through being on this tour with this band. This band is like a total bad influence on Grayson. Um, they're into drugs and sex and all that stuff. The, the first night he's there, they try to party with him, you know, and try to like. But you can tell that it's forced. They don't really like Grayson. He's He doesn't really fit in well with them. Um, but he continues on with the tour because Zach's there and they have like this great relationship. And, and Zach also has a story of, of his own. He's a recovering addict as well as alcoholic. So yeah, there's a story there and his, his he has like a family uh, business that his dad owns and runs and his siblings run it. They all live in like the same, uh, apartment um because they're the business is doing is doing enough to kind of keep them afloat but it's not really doing well so yeah so there's a story um uh, with zach and then there's a story there's grayson's story uh with his dad and coming out and all that um so he doesn't eventually come out to his dad so and and it's it's i find that that, that was really done well as as well like i said it wasn't um it wasn't a huge issue. I don't know. I'm doing terrible trying to describe this this book, but it was really good. I enjoyed it. I really did like it a lot. I love Grayson and Zach. Um, I love their story. It was sort of a slow burn relationship, um, but not too slow. I thought it was kind of just right. This is also a very good, great start to the male male romance genre if um, if you're looking for a book to start off with. Uh, just to kind of get yourself started into male male romances, this this would be a great read because there's not really, um, like I said, the, the the sexy times are there, but they're not they're not detailed, you know. But yeah, there's also issues with you know with the band going on. So there's there's lots going on. There's lots of the story. It kept me interested. It kept me kept me going. Like I said, I was just kind of thrown off at some points. But there is a there is another book to the story, and I think it's a book uh, about Grayson's mom and dad. So. There you go. <laughs> Next up, I read Birthday by um, Meredith Russo. This was a beautiful story, y'all. Very beautiful trans story. Um, I gave this four stars. I did listen to this on audio. The narration was was wonderful, and I didn't realize till after I read the book because there was an interview on the audio um, with the author and the narrator, and both. I didn't realize the author was trans, trans as well as the narrator was trans. Um, but yeah, this is a story of a young, a young guy or two young men. Um, they were basically born on the same day, same hospital. Their parents became friends. They became friends at a very, very young age. They've always celebrated their birthday together. When Morgan was around 13 is kind of when the story begins. He realizes that he wants to be a girl he it has nothing to do with him preferring girls over boys in fact that he's 13 so it's not really about that he's not really feeling those emotions yet but he just feels like he's in the wrong body he feels like he should be a girl he tries to tell eric that on many occasions and it just never really comes out uh, you can tell um, as they're growing up, each chapter is like their age. So um, I think I think it starts off with 13. Yeah, it starts off 13. Uh, so there's not really chapters. There's just 13, 14, 15, 16. So each age, uh, their relationship is progressing as well as um, themselves, their sexuality. And even though Eric is considered a straight character, he he sees Morgan as a girl. Uh, he can see that there's something different about Morgan and how he explains how Morgan is beautiful, like he has beautiful features uh, and almost like a girl. So um, there's there's love there as a friendship as well as you know, it grows into more over time. And as, of course, as Morgan um, progresses into who she wants to be, or needs to be, or is supposed to be. 
a beautiful, like I said, beautiful story. There is trigger warning. There is some attempted at suicide in the story. So, so yeah, it was. At some, sometimes it was tough to read, but um, just it was. It was just beautiful. Beautiful story. Beautiful narration. I, I really, I really did like it. Next up, we have the guest list. Um, I actually did a reading vlog for this, so I'll link that down below. You can go check it out. You can, it's got spoilers in it. If you've already, you know, if you've already read the guest list, you can watch the whole thing, but I put up spoiler alerts in the video so you can fast forward through those parts if you want to. But yeah, I have all my thoughts on this book in that video. Um, this is a three and a half stars for me. I don't usually like giving out half stars, but I couldn't decide which way to go. I didn't find it was quite a four star because it was very, very slow paced. I, I didn't really get good connection with all the characters. I only liked a few of them, but yet it was definitely better than just a three star, even though three stars still aren't bad as far as my ratings go. Uh, it's still a good, a good read, a good story. But the the ending and the writing of this book, I just felt like it needed a little bit more. It needed it had to have that half star because it wasn't wasn't quite a four, but it really wasn't a three. Uh, that's the only way I can explain it. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was very slow for me. I I had a hard time really getting into the story. In the beginning, the first like 50 pages were pretty easy to read. It had that creepy vibe going. I thought I heard something. <laughs> oh yay! Crabs, Mark. You know how to do this? It yeah. looks like it's not shredded. I don't know how to shred it. You just pull it apart with your fingers. Uh, okay. But yeah, the, um, so it's a, a couple basically getting married on a really creepy type of island with like this old mansion like sitting on top of the island. That's how I pictured it in my mind, just the way it's pictured here on the book. <laughs> That's kind of how I pictured it, sort of like a castle-like place secluded on this island, very old and creepy. There's um, there's, you know, graves of people from past that have lived on this island. But yeah, you don't really get the feel of everything that's happening until the ending. And just the way that it was written out and performed and played out for you was was fantastic. I mean, I didn't see any of it coming. There's There's a lot of scenarios that happen in the end that I was just blown away about. Um, so yeah, that's what I mean by how it, it, it was such a slow read of getting to this point and that's kind of what made it go up for me. Like when I was first reading it and like getting halfway through the book, I was like, mm, this is kind of a three star. It's good, but it's not catching me. You know, it's not, you know, it's not really what I was expecting, but yet when you get to the ending, I think, I think I was like 200 pages in when things start to really unravel, I guess, sort of, sort of say. And all the characters that we follow have a story and that story sort of melds together some kind of way. And it leads to the murder of this one person. So, so yeah, like I so said, we follow a good handful of people. We follow the bride, Jules. We follow Hannah, which is the plus one because she's, I'd say she's the plus one because she's Charlie's wife. Charlie is good friends with the bride, which right there, I was kind of suspicious of Charlie's character. You don't get his narration, but you feel him through Hannah's narration. I really connected with Hannah. And then you have the best man who is Jono. He is supposedly best buds with the groom. But he has a bit of a troubled past with the groom um, that you, you know, you start of lead up to. Then we get the narration, uh, I don't know how to say her name, she's the wedding planner. And I was a little confused by her narration. I'm like, why is she in this scenario? But we, we find that out later on in the book, what she, what kind of stories she has to tell. 
and it all leads to pretty much why they're there on the island to get married in the first place. And then we also follow Olivia, who is the bridesmaid, and and also Jules's half sister. She is Olivia is a troubled soul herself. She went through some some things that connects to the whole story. Uh, it's it was just crazy how everything connects all in one. So we get Hannah's instead of getting Charles's story, we get Hannah's story for a reason because um, she's connected in some sort of way too. All these five people are connected to this one person and this one murder. It's very intriguing once you get to the end and you you make the connection. Very, very intriguing. So yeah, three and a half. Um, if I had to give it a clean cut star, I, I, I think I'd have to go up to a four just because of the way everything played out. It was fantastically done. And last, but certainly not least, um, this is the first book in the Elite series. This is Danger Zone. The second book is called Need for Speed. And then our third book is Classified. I actually read Classified in like just recently. I just recently finished it, but I'm gonna include it in this wrap up because you really have to read all three books to to get the story. They all they book one and two leave you with cliffhangers. You have to read all three. If you're gonna be if you're gonna be in this this series, you gotta go for it. It's a really good series. I highly recommend it. It is written by Ella Frank and Brooke Blaine. So of course, in the first book, we're introduced to our characters. We're introduced to Panther and Solo, Grant, AKA Panther, uh, Mateo, AKA Solo. Uh, those Panther and Solo are their, um, what do they call it? Um, their call names. They are fighter pilots in the Navy. <laughs> I think they are like the best of the best. So there's like a class of like, I don't know how many are in this class, but we're mo more focused on Solo and Panther. Uh, and then their friends of course are in, are their elite friends, pi pilots, whatever, are in the background. So the story starts off really, it's a great start to the series. The story starts off like in a bar setting uh, and we we get the first narration from Grant or Panther and he's basically he's gonna be in this training program for like 10 to 12 weeks so he's basically going out to this gay bar to kind of to you know get his feel for the next like 10 to 12 weeks and this is where he's supposed to meet his hookup here but um in comes Mateo, aka Solo, who um, basically sees Panther and goes for it. You know, he's he's uh, Solo's very sort of cocky and uh, very sure of himself, which which I fell in love with his character like right away. I was like, who is this guy? But they don't uh, they don't end up hooking up that night. So like I said, Panther was there to meet someone else. Um, they but there is sort of like an encounter between the two of them and. Little do they know they're gonna be in the program together. So the next day when they're on base, they come face to face with, you, with each other. Panther is out with his family and close friends, but he's not out in um, the Air Force or the Navy or whatever, whatever it is. He's not out with those guys. Um, so he kind of, you know, keeps his sexuality on the down low. He's kind of planning on just getting through this program and seeing where um, this is sort of his last stop before he decides what he wants to do with um, with this, with his life, with his flying, what, you know, does he want to continue with the Navy? What, what exactly does he want to do? So this is his last stop before he makes that big decision. This is a very, very slow burn, uh, I guess, enemies to lovers kind of book. But the tension, the sexual tension between these two guys in the beginning are just is off the charts. It's it's great. I, I could I could feel it through the pages. Um, and book one le definitely leaves us with a cliffhanger. So we jump into book two, which is Need for Speed. And in Need for Speed, we get a little bit more emotions between the two guys. And um, if there's going to be a relationship between these two guys, and can it outlast the elite? So their relationship is definitely tested in this book. Panther's father is also part of, you know, the elite program. He is also uh, in the Navy, a fighter pilot. Uh, so there's a lot of expectations for Grant and there's a lot of 
weight on his shoulders to do the the right thing to be the good man to you know um to be top of his class without his father's influence um but in the in book two he really discovers himself and who he wants to be he gets a lot of help from solo um in this book influencing him uh on who he really wants to be and again book two leaves us with a nice little cliffhanger uh, to move on to book three. So classified. So in this book, Panther and Solo go through a couple little hoops in um, in their relationship. And that's mostly on Panther because he's, um, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but, but in, in this book, there uh, an encounter happens between Solo and Panther's father that really puts their relationship to the test his first reaction may not be the best reaction to the encounter and he realizes what the right thing to do in that situation is. Uh, so the story kind of focuses on that and and they're also graduating in this book from their elite class. So this is the final, the final book. I don't think there's going to be any more after this. And then from here on we get what what they're what they're going to do. It's like this this is it before they really um, become who they want to become as far as their careers. Uh, so they're handed, you know, options at the end of their graduation of what they're going to do and, and how it's going to affect their relationship. So yeah, I, I can't really say any more than that, but I highly, highly, highly recommend this series. I loved it. I adored these two guys. I fell in love with them right from the start. It's a very quick series to read, it's just very enjoyable, um, lots of good sexy times, y'all. Just throwing that out there again, just, but these are, they, they're detailed, but they're done in a very classy way and they're very sexy. I just, I really enjoyed um, all the books. Really, really glad I read this, this series. All right, that is it. That is my June wrap up, everything I read in June and maybe a little bit of July. But all in all, I had a great reading month. I had such a fun time in June reading all my male male romances. Hope y'all had a great month as well. Hope you're all doing well out there, staying safe. I'll have all these books listed down below if you wanna check any of them out for yourself, as well as all my social medias, anything you're looking for. Other videos to watch, Amazon wish list. you wanna check out what I'm wishing for. I even put my uh, Kindle Unlimited wish list down there as well for y'all to check out. And um, Book of the Month. You want to join Book of the Month? I have my referral link down below. It's $9.99 for your first month and then $14.99 after that. But yes, as always, thank y'all so much for watching and sticking around and listening to me talk on and on about all these books I loved this month. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.